Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now we're just going to deal with the first verse of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Sometimes we don't recognize seasons in life. And we look at something as if it's a permanent fix. One time I was going through a trial. I mean, it was a very difficult time. And one of the brothers was putting, he was preaching. And he said, you know, what you're going through, he wasn't talking to me, he was just sharing with all of us at church. He said, what you're going through seems like it's a permanent fix. He said, but remember, it's only a season. Summer comes, summer goes. Then there comes a new season. Fall comes, fall goes. Another season, winter comes, winter goes. That is the most difficult of the four seasons. Now, isn't it? Now, and then you have spring, where there's growth and fertility and beauty and, and new blossoms and new beginnings. Well, that's the way life is. You have seasons that are loaded with storms and wind and tornadoes, hurricanes, blizzards, uh, heat waves, uh, drought, floods. But each season carries its own, its own little ingredients. And listen to this. That's the way life goes. If you're going through something, if you're dealing with an issue that's been going on for years and years and years, number one, remember, you're not permanent, let alone the season. So you know the trial will, as the Bible calls, come to pass. This too shall pass. Don't look at it as a lost cause. Don't look at it as, oh, well, I might as well give up. Don't look at it as, oh, this is my lot in life. No, this too shall pass because it's a season. It's only a season. It's not a lifelong curse. So don't call it a curse. God doesn't curse those he loves. He may give you a little booty whooping, but even booty whoopings only last a season. And then it comes to pass. It ends. Do you hear what I'm saying? I know you're looking at what you're going through like, golly, is God mad at me? What did I do? But guess what? Everybody has their cross to bear. Every single person. And remember, if you think God has turned his back on you for what you're going through, and you wonder how could he act like he loves me when he's treating me like an orphan right now. Where the heck is God now? Well, guess what? You have sinned. I have sinned. And a lot of what we have to go through is part of what we have planted in our lives. But guess what? There is one who has never committed a sin. And if he had to go through it, think about that. God turned his back on Jesus Christ, our Savior. But it was only for a season and a very short one. Three days later, he rose from the grave. God called him up and he was able to go throughout letting people know he's alive. He's alive. You serve a risen savior. You serve a living God. He's not an idol that sits like a little piece of wood on a tabletop that some man has carved. This is the living God. And he knows what he's doing with you. He's not going to crush you. He's not cruel. He is not going to crush you under this. Something's going to happen that will amaze you. And you will look back and say, I had to go through that to get to this. Do you remember Shawshank Redemption? Whoa. 
in that movie, the man chipped and chipped. Now, here's the trip. He was in prison for 20 years, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. If it doesn't, y'all forgive me. I'm old. But he served, I believe, 20 years for a crime he did not commit. His wife was murdered, and they blamed him. He sat there every single day, chipped away, chipped away at a hole in the wall. He found the weakness in the in in, in the uh, the mortar or whatever you call it. In the meantime, he had been beaten, he had been raped, he had been, I mean, just mistreated even by the uh, the warden. The warden just took advantage of him. But he didn't sit down and take it like a loser. He didn't see himself as a loser. He knew who he was. I ask you, do you know who you are? He didn't have a lot of resources to draw from, but he had his hope and his faith in being free. And he never gave up on it. He chipped away at that thing for 20 years. And listen to this. He got everything together and had to swim. Listen to this, you guys. You think you have it bad. He had to swim through the sewer system from the prison that combined garbage and urine and human feces and who knows what other what else with rats and ooh, he could barely breathe. The stench was so strong and he had to lower his body in that mess to swim to freedom. Just the thought of it is, is nauseating. But he made it. He made a plan and he planned his he, he planned it and he worked his plan. And he ended up in another country free as a bird. I say to you, don't give up. Ask God to give you all kind of ideas to give you the strength, the stamina, the ability. He will not put on you more than you can take. Get your freedom. It's coming. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Please don't give up now. Don't sit there and say, God doesn't care about me. That's not God. God is love. But life puts us through changes. God knows how to change a season. God knows how to change the weather. Remember that. And he knows your timing. He knows your makeup. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what will crush you. Don't give up. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do not throw in the towel. You're too close right now. You're way too close to the finish line to sit down. Keep moving. When you've done all you can to stand, stand therefore. Stand, baby. Stand. When you can't do nothing else but breathe in, breathe out, stand. Because your change is coming. Now, I'm done with you, but don't you be done with God, okay? God bless you. Please be encouraged.